Hello, my name is Matthew Harris. I am here at the Fairmont City Library in the American Legion Meeting Room. Uh, we are part of the Mississippi Valley Library District. Today is February 3rd, 2017. Today we are interviewing Mr. Babe Rodriguez. Uh, his wife is here with us. Emma Bell Rodriguez. Thank you very much. Um, so today, like I said, we are interviewing Mr. Rodriguez about his service in the uh, military. Mr. Rodriguez, when were you born? 1923. 1923, okay. Were you born here in Illinois or where were you born? I was born here in Fairmont City. Fairmont City, right where we are today. Yeah. Um, who were your parents and what were their occupations? Uh, uh, my parent was Frank Rodriguez. Uh, he was working in uh, American Zinc. And my mother didn't work, you know, Amanda. And that's it. Okay, okay. Did you have any, any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I had uh, uh, five sisters and one brother. He was in the service, too, uh, for a while, in the Navy. And, uh, that's about all I know on this subject. That's okay. Did you have any other family members that served in the no. service? No. Nobody? Okay. What were you doing before you entered into the service? What was I doing? Mm -hmm. Working in American Zinc. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, what branch did you, uh, were you in? Air, Air Force. Air Force. Okay. At and that time, it was the Army Air Force. Army Air Force, because okay. Because they didn't have a general, you know, mm -hmm. for the Air Force till later, till a little, little after, but a little before the war and then. That's about it, no Okay. And when you joined, were you enlisted or were you drafted? I was drafted. You were drafted. Okay. Do you remember much from when you left for training? Oh, yeah, I left for training from uh, Belleville to, uh, not Chicago. Sound like the next to Chicago. I can't think of it. Hartford, no? Uh, I, th that might be right. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it is. I can't remember. That's Rockford. That's Rockford, okay. Rockford. And then from there. From there. We're from Belleville. I was just sitting there to the list. And they took us. They took us in a train and out to Amarillo, Texas, a ba basic training. So they want to know. Uh, yeah, that's where I took my basic training. And, and, uh, and then I got shipped out overseas from there. Okay. Do you remember any of your instructors in training and how they treated you? Well, they were all nice to me. I don't know. They didn't bother me at all. You know, like harsh words or anything like that. Good. Good. Did you receive any special specialized training? Well, special in uh, machine guns. Uh, take them apart blindfolded and put them back. And, and, uh, Did you find it easy to to change into the military lifestyle with with physical training, um, with just lifestyle like that? Well, Was it easy enough to keep up running like we had to run, you know, training? And uh, I was gonna think of something else. I can't remember right now.
It's Helen Field, I think in uh, Texas we got shipped to from the basic tram. And from there we took, I don't know, a month training and, and we went to Denver for training, certain thing. Then we went from there to Florida for some training before we went overseas. Okay. Um, where all did you serve when you were? Where all? Where all did you serve? Where all did I serve? Oh, I was top third gunner. Top third, you know, on a plane. I uh, put in 54 missions. European theater of war. Um, if you feel comfortable talking about any stories from training or while you're serving? Um, see, I, I was training to be, be a, gun, a gunner in a B-24, the big bomber. Well, they took us in a building and, and they take, take the air out to seem like you're going up, to, you know, 10,000, 5,000. And uh, coming down, I couldn't clear my ears, you know. Boy, they were hurting my nose. Well, they put the air, air holes in there and finally got down, you know. Well, then, and then I went to this, to the surgeon the next day, doctor, you know, surgeon. <laughs> and I told him about it, and he says, ah, oh, you'll be all right. <laughs> well, I guess in about six days, I was all right. <laughs> then they shipped me out of there to the medium bomber that what I was in. We only went 10,000 feet and didn't need no uh, oxygen. Okay. Um, well, you said you had you were on fifty four missions, so you were you saw active combat, obviously. Um, do you have any memories, or what were you feeling while well, you were yeah, on those missions? I was, I was feeling, I don't know, not happy or anything, but uh, uh, first time I was in a plane, you know, <laughs> first time. <laughs> Not a little nervous. Too young. Too young to have any worries. <laughs> Alright. Um, how close were you with your fe fellow airmen? Was it, were you a I family, the, I a bond? Old, I was the oldest. You were the oldest. See, we only had uh, three. The pilot, another gunner. And once in a while, we would, we would take a navigator with us. And before, and I don't know, he was very young. I was the oldest, 22, I think. <laughs> yeah, I was the oldest. You said you were in Italy and France? Is yeah, Italy and France. Oh, different. Flew over. Flew over them. Okay. What do you know about me? <laughs> you only married me for 70 years. Uh, you know, <laughs> was in Italy. I got pictures. In Italy. Oh, yeah, yeah, Italy you know, but... European theater, different you know, <laughs> countries. While you were while you were over there, was it were you treated by civilians in the other countries? How did they treat you? Well, I treated pretty good. They didn't, didn't bother me at all. Um, they all wanted to come back. To, uh, we'll come back to America. I mean, to the United States. 
you know, if you talk to one of them, you <laughs> take me with you. Come on. Yeah. Oh. When you were off duty, what were some things that you liked to do for recreation? Well, we used to play the, we had a, base, a, a ball, baseball. We were doing practice, just throw, you know, just throw, not hitting or anything, just throw. That's about it. That's about it. How, while, while you were serving, how was things such as food or um, things like that? Do you remember much about the food while you were overseas or anything? Oh, the food wasn't very good. Food wasn't good. <laughs> Breakfast. That was that was good. But breakfast was about the best. It was good, you know. And passed up some of them. <laughs> Where were you when the war ended? Where was I? I was in uh, let's see. I was in Italy, but uh I forgot what city. I was in Italy. And in Italy. Okay. Okay. And then I can't remember the town. They, 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 got, they got some different names, so I can't really understand. When you returned here to the United States, um, yeah, I'm assuming you came by plane. Yeah, by plane. By plane. How did how did you how were you received? How were you welcomed home when you came home? It was fine. It was fine. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so everybody was excited for. Oh, yeah. For everybody to be home. Well, coming home when I plane, though, I'll tell you what, we put in, ran into a storm. Oh, brother, he couldn't get over, over it and he couldn't get under it. Oh, it was terrible. I thought that's, that's it. You know, I'm, we're on. We ain't gonna have a parachute. We do is ice down there, you know, ice landing. Oh, it was just, that was scary. When you came back home, was it easy to change from being in a time of war overseas to back here of peace? No, it bothered me. It bothered you? It bothered me at all. Okay. How long did you stay in the service after you came home? Oh, I got, I got a, as soon as I got to Scott Field, I don't know why here. I did. I didn't do nothing else, you know, about the serve. That was it. I was finished with it. Get discharged. What? You were discharged. Yeah, naturally. From Scott Field, I was discharged. He sent me to Scott Field. <coughs> okay. Um. Are you a, a member of any organiz veterans organization? American Legion. American Legion here in Fairmont City, mm -hmm. here in Fairmont City, Illinois. After you after you left the service, where did you see yourself going, or, or what did you do after you had left? Uh, I didn't do that with the work of American Zach. I wasn't going anywhere, you know. I wasn't that my wife. Mm -hmm. I remember that made my day. How long have you guys been married? Seventy years. Seventy years. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Will be. Will be. Will be seven years. It's coming up soon. <laughs> if it lasts that long. 
Um, do you guys have any children or? Yeah, three girls. Three girls. Have any of them joined the military or no. anybody no, since? No. Not the girls were. No. They were. How? How did the wartime, your experience overseas? How did it affect your life? What's that? How did you say? While you were overseas serving during the war, how did that affect your life? How, how did that change your life? It didn't change my life. It didn't change your life. No. I was the baby I drink, I was the baby just, just doing, doing your duty, <laughs> doing your duty to your country. I had something to do, you know what I'm saying? I did it. Did you have any, do you have any life lessons that you learned while you were serving from when you served? How do you, you say that? Huh? Did, do you have any, did you learn any life lessons from being in the military? No, not really. I was just the same guy. I was, you know, I don't Did you serving in the military change your view on the military or how you feel about it at all? Uh, or war even? Not just the military, but military and wars? Change me at all, huh? you know. Between the, hmm. well, I've got to skip it. I don't know. That's okay. Do you have any any messages that you would like to leave? Don't do I? Is there any messages you would like to leave future generations? Of? Oh, uh, I don't know what to say, what to tell them. I don't know what to tell them. That's okay. Can you can you remember any any funny stories or anything that you might maybe had during training or during the war? Well, this one time we was going to this little town, you know, that we had a day to get off, I think, or do. And uh, there was a wall about that high, a brick wall you want to go into there. Well, my two buddies jumped over it, you know. Then I went, and there was a big old snake down there. Big old snake. I thought, oh man, that, I could have slipped on him, and oh, that, that's but one bad thing I had. That's a, We didn't get to go many towns at all, and that's about the only time. Well, I went to Rome, Rome, Italy, once. That was, uh, I think we got, we have six, 54 missions. You got to stay in a camp. You know, most of the time, you can go anywhere.
Can you think of any other stories that you have? Any good stories just of any missions or anything oh, that, that sticks out in well, your mind? Well, there's one mission. Uh, we were daytime. We were flying days then. Uh, we had a formation of eight planes, you know. And we went to the bottom of this bridge near this town. And I, I, I was the top turret, and I fo followed those bombs all the way down. And they were hitting bomb, bomb down there. Pretty soon, I seen a, 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 two, a bomb or two hit on top of the bridge. And when we get back, they, they uh, questioned me, you know, what did you see? What did you do? You know? And nobody said nothing. I said, well, I think we hit the bridge. I said, I seen two bombs go hit up higher than the ones down there that were hurting the ground, you know. And by God, when they took a picture of it, they did hit the bridge. <laughs> I was the only one that seen them. I don't know what the other gutters are doing. <laughs> uh, uh, they give you a citation and stuff like that. You know, you see something. Uh, I have three citations uh, and some medals. I don't know what all I'm for. Now, one scary one, you want to hear the story of that? Please, please. Okay, we were flying nights down. And we took this navigator. This navigator learned overseas to be a navigator. And the guy he flew, uh, the guy he flew with said, oh boy, he says he's really good, you know. Well, one day he flew with us. Gonna hit a bridge, and he says, Pinkerton, turn around. He says, I think I see an ammo dump down there. So we got down to about a thousand feet, maybe a little lower. And three searchlights hit us, and here come the here the bombs. They hit the right in the cell engine, knocked it out. So we only had one engine left, and we're shaking and everything. Pilot says, we got we to gotta get over their mountains. They're 10,000 feet high. He says, oh, the Apennine. He says, we got to get over there. Pretty soon he says, we can make it. We can make it. We made it all the way home. We get home. Before we got home, he told the little gunner down there, he says, or he told me, he told me. The pilot, he says, Joe. He says, are the wheels, are the wheels down? Lock. Go look through the tap trap door. I told the cadet, my gunner, I said, you better hold me now. <laughs> hold me. <laughs> I'm a look, look down there. I seen they were down, but I, I told my pilot, I said, I don't know if they're, if they're locked, you know. He's because his hydraulics was all shot out. You see, and, he, and so we got over the field, they said, rack it up. And uh, they trying to lock the wheels, you know. Well, then they, they called up from down there and they says, this can be a lot if you want to because we got an ambulance here and we got the fire truck and down there. <laughs> Pinkerton, the pilot, he's, he asked that the, the navigator, he says, he says, I'm going to bring it in. You, you can pay a lot if you want. He says, no, I'm with you, you know. So he said, Joe, he says, you want to pay a lot? No, 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 I'm with you. Well, he says, I never paid a lot before. 
and the other got hurt too. So we came in, he came in real slow. Hello, 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 hello. Finally, they were locked. But no hydraulic going out. In a field there, and then a ditch, and up there, and everywhere. <laughs> That's about the scariest one I've had. We got the whole shot, shot out with the whole stuff. You look at the plane somewhere, they were, you know, might come close to you. But uh, this was the, the worst one. Absolutely. Now, I, I know you had said that you bombed mainly bridges. Um, you had said you bombed mainly bridges. No, yeah, a lot of bridges. A lot of bridges. Yeah. Um, how did how did that make you feel when you were doing it? Was it just you felt like you were doing what was right? Or how did it make you feel? Well, just I didn't feel like it felt we got a bomb. That's it. Doing your just doing yeah. your job. Yeah. Doing your job. Did obviously you saw casualty? No, I didn't see it. Did you didn't well didn't see no. him. So you never lost any No. Any other airmen? That oh were yeah. yeah, we lost some. You know, the ocean was close to to the uh, landing where we lost the landing field, and uh, we lost uh, two, three of them there. That went down, uh, and then when we we bombed on France, you know, the pilots were coming in to land and need a power line. Kill them, but that's about it all I I would assume that you were, you were you constantly when you were overseas. Were you constantly afraid, or were you just so much adrenaline? I don't know. I just too young. Yeah. I wasn't scared. Now, they were different. I'm scared when the bombs got close, so. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't shake that plane up. Yeah, we, we, we were the, what, 25 day missions and. 24, 2020, all well, anyway, it ended up that the rest of them were night. Did you have we a... We went off by ourselves at night. We didn't have you know, other bombers with us. Mm -hmm. We kept the Germans awake all night long. We lost four more gold, another four more gold, and another one. Did you have a preference for flying in the the daytime or the nighttime? Did you have a preference? Oh, I like the daytime because I could see more stuff, you know, with Mount Bauman. Nighttime, hard to tell. You, 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 hit the, you drop your bombs, you don't know if you hit them. You know. We were, that, that one time we was uh, bombing real close to the front line. You know. Do you have any other stories that you would like to tell about anything at all from wartime, peacetime, anything at all? Would, would there be any other stories you would like to, to tell? Not really. <laughs> you've, 
Yeah, we remember when they had more. If you can't, if there's nothing else, you you are perfectly fine. No worries. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything else you wanted to talk about or anything you wanted to say. Well, what we said, uh, we were dropping bombs close to the front line. That was the night time. We'd go out to the ocean and our radar, our radar was taking it into the, in the bomb. Tell us when the bomb, when to drop the bomb. Well, they called up this one time, there's, there's a bandit on your tail, you know. Bandit was a, 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 a plane of, and uh, I looked around, I couldn't see it. You know, I didn't want any fire or nothing you know, from, from the engine. Yeah, I couldn't see anything. And, uh, and they, they says, well, he's on your tails, so the pilot, Took a dive down, you know. And I said, Lieutenant, I said, we didn't drop our bombs. I didn't see them bomb. I said, I didn't see the bomb. And he went to the ocean, the radar took us back in. Same place. And we bombed it then. I was right. We, you know, we had our bombs in a bomb bay. You don't want to come in and landing with your bombs. You know, they tell you to drop them out in the ocean. It don't come in well, you know. I cause a lot of trouble. Ah, uh, that's about all. Something. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys have nothing else to say, I greatly appreciate this today. It is an honor talking to both of you today. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Okay, thank you.